Be direct about what's going on, how you're feeling. With some people, maintaining healthy boundaries doesn't require a lot of direct, clear-cut dialogue. If you're dealing with somebody that has good boundaries and respects your boundaries, um, that might not be necessary much at all, but there are, are very few. There are very few relationships like that. So sometimes we just have to be direct. People are not mind readers. They don't know what you're feeling if you don't tell them. And it's okay to tell them. Sometimes we're afraid to tell them. What if they disrespect that? What if they, what if they laugh? If you're in a relationship with someone who cares about you at all, they're not going to laugh. They're not going to disrespect when you, get, uh, when you, you want to have a conversation about what's going on on the inside. Well, it's great to be here tonight. Um, If you have your Bibles, turn to Matthew chapter 19 tonight. As Christians, we know that we're supposed to be serving other people, loving people, serving people, and, and that's good. It's something we're supposed to do. But sometimes we get so focused on what we're doing for God or for other people that we kind of lose track of ourselves in the process. Sometimes we get so busy that it, we can get overwhelmed with, with service, with what we're doing. And I want to talk about what we need to do, to do for us. Because if we aren't taking care of ourselves, we aren't going to be in good shape to minister to anybody else with any kind of effectiveness. Or if we, even if we are, maybe we're out there being very effective. But if we're staying so close to burnout that we're just always stressed and always exhausted, um, think how much better and how much more effective we could be if we learn to take care of ourselves tonight. And I'm just going to talk about one little aspect of taking care of ourselves. Uh, but let's start with the scripture because the, Lord, uh, the word of God talks about this too. So if you're in Matthew 19, take a look at verse 19. Uh, the second half of this verse, it says, Love your neighbors as you love yourselves. It's short and sweet and simple. And we always focus on love your neighbors. We're out there doing, we're out there ministering. But sometimes we, we forget the second half of that sentence that says, as we love ourselves. If we aren't taking time to take care of ourselves and to love ourselves, we aren't going to be able to, to love God's people the way that we can. I learned this the hard way one time. I, was, I, I love ministering to people. And I was here at the church. I was doing deliverance full time. And, and then uh, some things happened with our school of ministry, and I took on uh, some administrative work doing, dealing with that and then teaching some of the classes. And I got to the place where I was here and working all the time, and I loved it. But I let myself get so close to burnout that, that I almost lost it completely. And uh, I got a really rude... A uh, sudden wake-up call that I just needed to take some time to take care of me. Or I wasn't going to be any good to take care of anybody else. And so even as we learn how to take care of ourselves better, I want to talk about one particular aspect of that tonight. Because there's a lot of different ways. There's a lot of different things involved with uh, what we need to be paying attention to in our own lives, in our own self, what's going on on the inside of each one of us. But this, one, but this one is about our relationships with people. In our relationships, we know that we're supposed to love people. And that's good. And that's what we're supposed to be doing. But tonight I'm going to talk to you about boundaries. How to have healthy boundaries. How to, have, how to set godly boundaries around your life. And have boundaries with people. Reasonable boundaries in a godly way. 
Because this is something that sometimes we as Christians, we, we don't learn. Even those of us that grew up in a good family, most of the time didn't learn about healthy boundaries at home. And any of us that grew up in a dysfunctional family, any of those out there, we definitely didn't learn it at home. And so we go into all of our relationships not knowing what boundaries are and not having any idea how to set them in our relationships. And then we become a Christian and we somehow think that if we ever say no or put any kind of restriction on what we do, even in service, in church, with God's people, that we're being a bad person or we're being a bad Christian. But that's not the case. It's good to have healthy boundaries. We all need to do that. And we're going to talk about what that looks like a little bit tonight. We're going to talk about what boundaries are and what they're not and how to know if we have some boundary issues that we might need to deal with. This is about having healthy relationships. Healthy relationships. That means we know when to say yes and when to say no, and we don't feel guilty when we have to say no or when we just want to say no. That's okay. But sometimes as Christians... We feel like it's not okay. So what are boundaries? Well, boundaries are the lines between where you end and where somebody else begins. Boundaries is about taking responsibility for what you think, how you feel, and what you do. Boundaries tell other people how you will be treated. Do you know that when there's a dysfunctional relationship, and we find ourselves in a place where we're not being treated very well, yes, that other person is definitely responsible for what they're doing on their end of the relationship. But I'm also responsible for not having boundaries that deals with that. And I want to talk to you a little bit about how to do that tonight. This is not a deliverance message. Everybody thinks if I'm teaching, it must be a deliverance message. Well, I teach this in deliverance, but it's not a deliverance message. It's a relationship message. And that's something that we all need. Boundaries tell, don't tell people what they need to do. Boundaries tell people what I'm going to do. When you set a boundary in your life, you're telling people what you're going to do. Boundaries come from having a good sense of self-worth. Have you ever found yourself wondering, how can I set limits and still be a loving person? Or how can I answer someone who wants my time, my energy, my love, my money? Or why do I feel guilty whenever I consider saying no or setting a boundary in my life? Well, I'm here to tell you tonight that it's okay It's okay to have boundaries. It's okay to say no. There are times when you need to. There's times when we all need to, and that's okay. Boundaries are not being mean. You're not being mean when you say no to somebody. Even when you're in a helping ministry, this is something that I do. This is something that our missionary does. This is something that lots of you do. You want to help people, and that's great. But sometimes we still have to say, no, I can't do this. I can't do this now, or I can't do this at all. And that's all right. Boundaries aren't selfishness or self-centeredness. We don't use boundaries to punish someone or to try to make them or manipulate them into doing what we want them to do. Boundaries are about taking care of you in a healthy way so that you can help other people better. And when you set boundaries with people, you're teaching them how to take care of themselves so they can get out of those difficult situations that you're trying to help them walk through or to help them get out of. So boundaries are something that's important for all of us. Boundaries say, what's happening in this situation is not okay. And if it continues to happen, this is what I'm going to do. Boundaries isn't about throwing out a bunch of ultimatums and saying, you need to do this and you need to do that or else. Now, sometimes we do have to have, I I don't like the word ultimatums, 
but consequences when somebody is trampling on our boundaries. But it's never to manipulate and control people. If we have difficulty setting boundaries, it's usually fear-related. When we think about something like this, many times fear is what grips us. Fear of rejection, fear of abandonment, fear of someone else's anger. Someone who finds themselves in an abusive situation, maybe they feel like they can't stand up for themselves because they're afraid of that other person's anger. What will they do? How will they respond? Am I going to get hurt? Sometimes people are afraid of loneliness. My own background, I came from a lot of dysfunction. I came from dysfunction in the family that I grew up in. And then there was a string of dysfunctional abusive relationships after that. And one of my biggest fears about confronting someone else's uh, violent or abusive treatment was fear that I would never have anybody to love me, that I would be alone forever, that if I let this person, if I set a boundary with this person and they left, that I'd be alone forever with no one to love me. And that is a trick of the enemy. It's a lie. But we need to know that up front. As you think about maybe the places in your life where you need to have stronger boundaries, know that that's just something the enemy is going to try to do to keep you trapped in a dysfunctional or an abusive relationship. You're not going to be alone forever. For one thing, you've got your whole church family that's going to help you walk through things and they're going to stand with you in the process. And as you get your own heart healed, you're going to be able to find someone who's not as dysfunctional as the person you're maybe escaping from at the moment. And another fear that's very common when we think about setting boundaries is the fear of losing someone's approval. That's pretty strong sometimes. So we need to remind ourselves that we have God's approval. We have the approval of our godly friends. That if someone who's being abusive in our life, um, if we lose their approval, that's okay. Because you're worth it. I'm worth it. We need to, uh, we need to deal with the issues that are happening in our life so that we can be healed, be whole, and move into the things that God has for us uh, with more strength. And boundaries help us do that. There are lots of different kinds of boundaries. And I want to talk just a little bit about what some of those are. Uh, number one, there's material boundaries. It's, it's up to you to determine in your life whether you give or lend things to other people. Things like money, your car, clothing, books, food, anything. Any of your stuff. It's your job to say, yes, it's okay for you to borrow this, or no, I, I prefer not. I set boundaries about the things that I lend because I learned the hard way that a lot of times when you lend, like when I lend my books, most of the time I never see them again, and then I don't even remember who I lent them to, so I can't even ask to get them back. So now I kind of have a boundary in my life where uh, you're, ha you're welcome to come over to my house and sit in my library and read that book, but I don't lend books right now. <laughs> Um, because that's what works for me. But with your things, you have every right to set boundaries in your material world around you. Now, another thing is mental boundaries. These are your thoughts and your values and your, uh, your opinions. You have a right to your opinion, even if it's different than somebody else's opinion. That's okay. How do we know if we struggle with mental boundaries. Well, do you feel like you're easily suggestible? Do you get pulled by someone else's opinion into changing yours? Or do you know what you believe and why you believe it and are you able to stand and hold on to your opinion even if someone else has a different opinion? Or can you listen with an open mind to somebody else's opinion or do you feel like you just need to get in there and tell them what you think and try to make them change their mind? That's a boundary issue too. It's boundary issues on both sides of this. 
The pushy person that just thinks everybody needs to agree with them has the same boundary issues as the person who will change their opinion with every person they meet out of fear. But you have a right to your own thoughts and your own opinions. And there's nothing wrong with that. Then there's physical boundaries. Your personal space, your privacy, <clears throat> your body. Do you give a handshake or do you give a hug? It's up to you. Some people are huggers and they come at you like this, just ready to hug. If you're not comfortable with that, just stick out your hand. There's nothing wrong with that. It's a physical boundary. It's okay. It's okay to just go as far as you feel comfortable. When you get to know somebody, you might be very uh, comfortable giving them a hug. But if it's a stranger, or if you've been sexually abused and someone of the opposite sex is coming up, they might not have any ulterior motives. Maybe they're just a hugger. But if you're not comfortable with that, that's okay. You don't have to hug people. And if you're a hugger and somebody suddenly steps back and sticks out their hand, don't be offended by that. So respect their boundaries. Um, emotional boundaries. Now this is a big one. Because we get into things like emotional abuse sometimes where just because somebody isn't getting beaten bloody, we think that that's not really abuse. Uh, but emotional abuse does every bit the same damage that physical abuse does. So emotional boundaries is separating your emotions and your responsibility for your emotions from someone else's. Do you know that I'm responsible for my emotional response to other people, whether they're sweet and nice or whether they're angry and obnoxious? Now, they're responsible for their behavior, but I'm responsible for how I receive that and what I do with it, whether it's good or bad on their side. Healthy boundaries prevent you from giving advice when you aren't being asked. Now, sometimes we like to do that. And, and sometimes I'll do that. Sometimes if somebody's telling me they're dealing with this or that, if it's my area that I know a lot about, I might offer an, a, a suggestion. But if they don't act like they're looking for suggestions, I don't keep pushing. Even if what I think I'm trying to share with them is what they really need to hear, and if they just listen, things could change. You can't push people. You're trampling on their boundaries when you do that. And if somebody's doing that to you, it's okay to say, stop. I appreciate your suggestion, and I'll consider that, but I'll make a decision when I'm ready. Emotional boundaries protect us from feeling guilty uh, for someone else's negative behavior. If someone else uh, just has a negative attitude, maybe they're upset, maybe they're angry all the time, and, and it just spews out. That's not your responsibility. That's not your fault. Have you ever seen those people that they're like, well, if you wouldn't have done this, then I wouldn't be upset right now. And they try to blame the victim for the way they're treating you. That's a boundary issue. That's not okay. It's okay to say no. This is not okay. And we're going to talk about how to set boundaries with stuff like this in a few minutes. But just recognizing some of these things as, as maybe an issue that, that you need to deal with or that someone that you love needs to deal with. Recognizing something is the first step in changing it. You are not responsible for anybody else's state of mind or emotional or actions. And, and they're not responsible for yours. You can't tell them, well, if you just quit doing this, then I'd, then I'd be okay. No. They might need to quit doing that. But they're not responsible for how you feel and you're not responsible for how they feel. These are some of the basic things about relationships with others in, in any kind of a relationship. This could be a friendship relationship or a marriage relationship or relationships with our children, relationships on the job or at work. 
Uh, these are just basic things that most of us didn't learn this when we were growing up. This is stuff that we all need to sit down maybe and study a little bit so that we learn how to have better relationships with people, how to set reasonable boundaries in our life in a godly way, how we, we need to learn the communication skills that will help us to resolve conflicts without a yelling, screaming fight. All of these things are learned behaviors. And truthfully, in the best families, many times we didn't learn that stuff at home growing up. So it's okay. It's okay if we don't know about this stuff. This is something we can learn about together and learn how to develop these skills together so that we can have better relationships in every area of our life. Healthy emotional boundaries require clear internal boundaries within ourselves. It requires us to know our feelings and our responsibility to ourselves and to others. You have a responsibility to yourself not to allow yourself to be abused. You can't change someone else's behavior, but you can definitely change how you react to it, how you respond to it, how to set boundaries with that person. Boundaries aren't to control that person, but they're to say, this is what I require in all of my relationships. And you're not being unreasonable when you expect to be treated with dignity and respect and spoken to in a respectful tone, in a respectful manner. When somebody is just being verbally obnoxious, uh, you know, the kind of people that will pick a fight over anything or everything, or every time they don't get their way, all they have to do is raise their voice and you're ready to do whatever you, they say or whatever they want. You don't have to live like that. You set boundaries by, by having a boundary conversation with these people, and it's not an easy thing to do. A boundary conversation would go something like this. If there's just somebody that's just yelling, screaming, and name-calling every time they get upset, a boundary conversation might sound like you pick a calm time to do this, not in the moment of anger, but you sit down, and this is a person you're in relationship with, not some stranger on the street. If this is someone in your home, your spouse, a friend, someone that you have to work with every day at work, you pick a calm time and, and you tell them, What's going on with you? When this happens, this is not okay. When, when, when the yelling and the screaming and the verbal assault starts, um, I'm not going to participate in a conversation like that. When a conversation becomes disrespectful, I'm going to get up and go in the other room. Now, if this is the type of person that's going to just follow you into the other room and keep on going, you might have to say, when the conversation becomes disrespectful, I'm getting in the car and going for a drive. You might just have to stand up and say, watch the kids, honey, I'll be back in half an hour, and go for a drive. Give them a chance to calm down. Give you a chance to calm down. Come back and try that conversation again. And every time it becomes disrespectful, you follow through. I'm not, it's not okay to treat me this way. I want to resolve this problem. I love you, but this is not okay. And you leave the room. If you're on the phone, this conversation just became disrespectful. I'll talk to you later. Click. That's not unloving. That's not unchristian. You're building healthy boundaries, reasonable boundaries, in a godly, loving way. And it's important that it is done in a loving way. If you have to have a conversation with someone about boundaries, you need to do it with love. That person needs to know, I love you. I want to resolve this issue that we're dealing with. But this that's going on here, this is not okay. And then you tell them what you're going to do every time this not okay behavior happens. And then you follow through every time. You're not being mean. You're not being manipulative. You're, you're expecting to be treated with dignity and respect, and it's okay for everyone to expect that. We all deserve that. So learning to set boundaries um, 
is not always easy, and sometimes it's a little scary, um, but it's always a good thing. It builds respect into a relationship. And if you're dealing with someone like a spouse who is supposed to love you, then they're going to be, they should be interested in working out this problem uh, so, that, so that the relationship can be good and can be loving and, and so that you can feel loved and they can feel loved. But for a while there, they might have to learn that if they want to f- finish a conversation with you without you leaving the room, that they're going to have to use a little bit of self-control in the way that they speak to you. And that's not an unreasonable request, is it? Because you deserve to be treated with dignity and respect. Oh, I forgot one on my boundaries list. We were talking about emotional boundaries, and the last one is sexual boundaries. This is an area where people can feel pushed and forced. Also, it's okay to protect your comfort level with sexual touch and sexual activity. It's okay for you to decide what, where, when, and with whom. And when you feel like you're being pushed to do something that you don't want to do, it's okay to say no. This is not okay. So what are some of the things that might kind of give us a clue that we might have a boundary issue in our life or in our relationships? Well, there's quite a few. <laughs> Probably one of the biggest ones is if, it feels, uh, if you feel like it, you're unable to say no, that would be probably the biggest uh, indicator. And there's a lot of people that feel that way. I ministered to one woman one time who, uh, if she ever said no, she was in an abusive marriage, and if she ever said no, he'd draw back his fist and threaten to punch her in the face. So she just learned never to say it. And by the time she finally got her out of this abusive relationship, she had serious boundary issues whenever. She would get anxiety every time she wanted to tell someone no, even about simple little things. And so we had to work through a whole process of helping heal those wounds and teaching her that it's okay to say no. You're not being, uh, you're not in danger. You're not being mean. You're not being a bad Christian or a bad wife or a bad person. Um, I learned this. See, I grew up with a lot of dysfunction. And when I came here and got involved in this church and in the ministry at this church, uh, you know, Paul and Alma, they came around me and they just sort of loved me through my whole healing process. And I started working in this ministry. And and so I was excited about working in the ministry. So whenever they asked me, can you do this or can you help with that? I'd be like, yes. And I wanted to. But I found eventually that sometimes... If I had other plans, I'd still say yes, and then I'd change all my plans so that I could help, even when it was really inconvenient sometimes. And there's times maybe when that's the right thing to do. But I remember the first time that Paul asked me if I could help with something, and I really had other plans. And I, and I, and I told him for the first time, no, I can't do that. I have plans that day to do something else. And I was, on the inside, I was shaking, and my knees were knocking, and it was like fear of rejection, fear of rejection, because that's what I grew up with. And his response to my no for the first time was, okay. And that was it. He didn't stop loving me. He didn't stop being my friend. He didn't throw me out of the ministry. Um... This was someone that had healthy boundaries and respected my boundaries. And that's how it's supposed to be. It's okay to say no when you need to say no. It's okay when you to say yes when you want to say yes. You know how the Bible tells us to let our no be no, our yes be yes and our no be no? That's about healthy boundaries. It's about following through on our word also, but it's about healthy boundaries. So it's okay to do that. If you have trouble saying no, that's kind of an indicator. This might be something that, that, need, that you need to work on a little bit. Uh, another thing is, do you feel responsible for other people's emotions? Do you know that you're not? 
You're responsible for yours. If another person gets angry at you, it doesn't even matter why. It doesn't even matter if you did something wrong. They're responsible for their own emotions and their own reaction and their own response to you no matter what you're doing. And you're responsible for yours no matter what they're doing. Now, sometimes somebody's behavior might not be okay. But you know what? You don't, get, you don't have to get in fear about it. You don't have to get freaked out and enraged about it. You don't have to get upset about it. You can choose to let it go. You can choose to confront it and deal with it. You can choose how you want to respond to that. Other people shouldn't be able to control me with their behavior. And I shouldn't be trying to control them with mine. And that's, that's what healthy boundaries do. Are you concerned about what other people think to the point of discounting your own thoughts, opinions, and intuition? Have you ever shared something with someone that you thought, I think this is going on in this situation, and they said, oh, no, don't worry about it. I don't think that's what's going on. And you ignored your own intuition and listened to them. And then later you found out you were right in the first place. It wasn't your intuition. You were hearing from the Lord. It's okay to listen to that inner voice within you. Now, sometimes we do need to decide whether that's uh, a fear pattern from our past that needs to be dealt with or whether that's really you're picking up on something there. Sometimes people that have been through a lot are really good at picking up on that stuff whenever they're around it again. They're... They're, they've gotten real sensitive to it, and they can spot it. And that's a good thing. Listen to that. Do you avoid intimate relationships? Sometimes we do that because we know that once we start to get close to someone, and this is not necessarily a sexual relationship or a, or a boyfriend-girlfriend relationship. This can be any kind of a relationship where you're starting to get closer to someone, and suddenly it feels scary. Fear of rejection, fear of something. It's always a fear response. But it's an indication that um, it could be a boundary issue there. How about obsession about a relationship? That clingy person who you want to try to help them, but then it's like they're glued to you and you, you can't get five minutes peace. That's a boundary issue too. That's, a, that's someone that you need to learn how to lovingly say no to some of the time. Or you might have to put down a boundary on how often someone can call you. So just, just being aware of some of this stuff. It's okay to do that. Um, the inability to make decisions. I was working with a lady one time that struggled in this area. She couldn't make a decision about anything. It was, it was horrible for her, and it was irritating for me because sometimes I just wanted to bless her, and I'm like, well, where do you want to go to lunch? Oh, wherever you want. No, no, I want you to choose. Oh, no, whatever you want. One time with this woman, I pulled the car off the road, put it in a parking lot, and turned off the engine. And she's like, what's going on? And I said, I'll start the car when you tell me where we're going. <laughs> But if you're, if you're one that just struggles to make even small decisions, that's a boundary issue. It's a fear. It's a fear issue. It's a fear about how the other person will react, which is a boundary issue. Do you believe that your happiness depends on somebody else? How they treat you, how they speak to you, what they do, what they say? No. Your happiness depends on you. God can help you be happy no matter how miserable somebody around you might choose to be. But we need to know that. We need to learn how to not let other people's decisions about their attitude, uh, how not to let that drag us into the, the pit of misery along with them. It's a boundary issue. You, you, you have to lovingly tell someone, I love you. I don't like to see you suffering like this, but I'm not going to join you in that pit. Yeah. 
Do you take care of other people's needs but not your own? Now this one's hard for Christians sometimes. Because as Christians, we want to help other people with their, with their needs. I love to help other people with their needs. If I'm able to help, I'm glad to help. But there's some people out there who ignore their own needs because they're always helping everybody else to the point where they have health issues of their own because they never get to rest. Or they spend every last penny they have going around and picking up everybody else and taking them where they need to go and they never get some rest. Now that's, that can sound like a wonderful Christian attitude, but it's a boundary issue. If you aren't taking care of you and your needs first, you're not going to be in shape to help anybody else. You might be able to help somebody a little, but how much better if you're taking care to make sure that you have the rest you need, that you have uh, what you need in your life to be strong and to be healthy, then you have that to give to others. Then you can really help them. So it's okay to say no sometimes. It's okay to say, I can't do that today. You're not being a bad person. You're not being a bad Christian. And if, if you're the one that just ignores your own needs because you're so busy with everybody else, that's, that's a red flag boundary issue right there. So take a look at that. Do you have difficulty asking for what you need in a relationship? That, that was a hard one for me too. I was eager to help everyone else meet their needs, but I very rarely would say, hey, can you help me with this? But you know what? It, that has to be a two-way street. Or one-sided relationships are not relationships. If, if I love to help other people, but there are some times when I just need to say, hey, can you help me out with this? I could use a little help right now. And that's Okay. Sometimes we struggle with that, but it's a boundary issue. Do you feel like you take on the moods or emotions of other people, the people around you? Sometimes people don't even know how they feel or what they think about certain things because they're so concerned about being rejected by people that they never get, they never look inward and, and really see what they believe or how they feel about things. It's okay to have your own opinions even when, it, even when it's different than somebody else's. And we need to know that. Someone who uses their anger and just sort of spews it out every time they get upset. When we've got someone who's yelling and screaming at their children and their spouse or they become even physically abusive with them, they're dealing with their own anger in a self-centered way. They're saying, my needs come first, above the children, the spouse, and their need to feel safe and secure and respected and, and comfortable. That comes second. And if somebody's doing that to you, you need boundaries about that. And if you're doing that to somebody else, <clears throat> then you need boundaries around how you allow yourself to behave with other people. Both sides of the issue are boundary issues. You need to respect someone else's no. People with no boundaries, they let people just walk all over them. They do the same thing when they want something. They do what I've come to learn in the deliverance ministry. I call it the relentless thing. When they're just going to push and push and push and push for what they want and ask 300 different ways, 500 different times, and they just never stop, and they don't respect your no, I can't do that. That's a boundary issue, too. I've learned, um, just as I walk through my own healing process, I kind of have a rule of thumb about that. <clears throat> because I've had people run over my boundaries, and I've found myself, you know, pushing... Um, against theirs sometimes, and I don't want to be that way. So my rule of thumb for that now is if, um, if I'm asking somebody, maybe, can you go to this, this thing with me? 
and they're like, oh, you know, I can't. I have plans that day. Uh, if it's something that looks to me like something could be shifted so that they could do both, I'll suggest it. But if they say now, the second time, then I just let it go. When you're pushing someone to get, to get your way, that's a boundary issue too. So we need to be aware about what this looks like, what the behavior looks like, so we can recognize that there's a boundary problem there. So now, ooh, I have a little bit of time to run through my quick list of how to build better boundaries in our relationships with people. We're going to go kind of fast because I don't have time anymore to develop each one. But number one is name your limits. Identify your physical, your emotional, your mental limits. Consider what you can tolerate and what you can't, what makes you feel uncomfortable or stressed out. Those feelings help us identify where our boundaries need to be. Number two is tune into your feelings. Now, we know that we're not to live by our feelings, but we need to pay attention to what's going on on the inside because our emotional responses to things can be an indicator of what's okay and what's not for us at, at a particular time. Things like resentment usually come from being taken advantage of or not appreciated. So if we start to feel resentment towards someone, we need to ask ourselves, why do I feel this way? What's been happening that's making me feel like my boundaries aren't respected? Resentment comes up when our boundaries get trampled. It's often a sign that we're pushing ourselves beyond our limits sometimes. When you feel guilty, you want to be a good, you know, a good husband, a good wife, a good son or daughter. We feel guilty about saying no. Pay attention to those feelings. Because you need to deal with why they're there. What are they coming from? When someone acts in a way that makes you uncomfortable, that's a clue that someone is violating your boundaries. We need to figure out what's going on on the inside so that we can set reasonable boundaries around our life in a godly way. Number three, we have to be direct. Be direct about what's going on, how you're feeling. With some people, maintaining healthy boundaries doesn't require a lot of direct, clear-cut dialogue. If you're dealing with somebody that has good boundaries and respects your boundaries, um, that might not be necessary much at all, but there are very few. There are very few relationships like that. So sometimes we just have to be direct. People are not mind readers. They don't know what you're feeling if you don't tell them. And it's okay to tell them. Sometimes we're afraid to tell them. What if they disrespect that? What if they, what if they laugh? If you're in a relationship with someone who cares about you at all, they're not going to laugh. They're not going to disrespect when you, get, uh, when you, get, when you want to have a conversation about what's going on on the inside. Ah. So be direct about how you feel and what's going on when this when this situation happens, this is how I feel about it. That's okay. Boundary conversations are not easy, but they're very necessary. Number four, give yourself permission. Feel the fear. Feel the guilt. Feel the self-doubt. But do it anyway. That stuff comes from the enemy who wants to keep you under his thumb. So you might feel some of those emotions while you're learning to set healthy boundaries. That's okay. Be persistent through that. We might fear another person's response if we set a boundary with them. We might feel guilty about speaking up for ourselves and saying no to someone. That's okay. Do it anyway when you need to. Some people believe they should be able to cope with everything. Nobody can do that. Everybody has to be able to say yes when they want to say yes and no when they want to say no. Boundaries are a sign of healthy relationships and they're a sign of self-respect. 
Consider your past. How were you raised? Ignoring the needs, ignoring your own needs might be an indication. It's an indication that there are boundary issues, but if it's normal for you, you're going to have to be very deliberate about changing that. Think about the people that you surround yourself with. Are you in relationships that are reciprocal, that are give and take, or is it all one side? Does all of the all of the acquiescing come from one side, or are people giving and taking on both sides of a relationship? If it's a healthy relationship, there's give and take on all sides. One person doesn't dictate how it's always going to be, and the other person just has to go along. That's a boundary issue, and it's not a healthy relationship. Is there codependency going on? My definition of codependency is... If I'm working harder on someone else's problem than they are, we're getting towards a codependent relationship. You can help someone deal with their problem, but if you're doing all the work and they aren't doing any of it, that's codependency. And that's never healthy, and there's always boundary issues with that. You have to make self-care a priority. Recognize the importance of your feelings and honor them. It's not selfishness when you do that. When you're in a better place, you can be a better wife, a better husband, a better parent, a better coworker, a better friend. And seek support. Sometimes, sometimes if we just had one friend that's also interested in working on boundary issues too, you can get together and practice those boundary conversations with your friend so that when you go into that relationship that you need to have a boundary conversation about you're kind of ready for the conversation and you have someone that you can call and not, not everybody in the church you have someone you can call and talk about it that'll support you whether it goes good or bad that's good and we need to be assertive not aggressive and not passive but assertive it's not enough to create boundaries. We actually have to follow through with them every time. And these are some of the ways that we build healthy relationships, maybe in places where we haven't had them before. And the last tip is to start small. Pick one thing that needs to change in one of your relationships. Pick a small thing to start with and learn how to set a, a reasonable boundary in a godly way. And as you move through that, then pick something else. You can't sit down with your husband or your wife and, and bring out a list five miles long about all the things that need to change. Start with one. Start and see if you can work together to find a way to resolve some of these issues. And then sometimes it just needs to be this, needs, this behavior needs to stop. And if it doesn't, this is what I'm going to do. And remember, this is a skill that we learn. We didn't grow up with it. It's not automatic. It's something we need to learn and master, each one of us. And finally, expect God to help you. He wants to help us learn this stuff. He wants us to have good, healthy, strong relationships with each other, with our husbands and wives, with our kids, on our jobs, everywhere. So as we start to learn how to set reasonable boundaries in a godly way, God will be right there by our side helping us walk through that process. Um, so that's... Yes, let's pray about this then. I'll, I want to pray over everybody. So Lord, I just lift up every person in this room tonight. I thank you for your presence around each person in this room. I ask you to touch each one of us tonight. Each one of us are in different situations with different things that we need to deal with, but you know the details for each one of us. And I ask you to just come and show each one of us how you want us to handle those things. I ask you to show us when to say yes and how to say no. I ask you to touch our hearts and surround us with your love and your peace and your protection. Lord, teach us all how to have healthier boundaries and better relationships. And we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen.